Paradise Decay TM. He's um, a, a, a Yognor, he's oh. a long time awesome guy who's made some amazing, amazing stuff. There are many tales of the land without sky, and it seemed to me as if my grandmother knew them all. Grandmother Drake. She always told me that in such a place no star of hope could shine, nor sun of life, nor moon of love, unless the people themselves became lights in the darkness. I remember there was one story I could never hear enough. It was the heroic tale of a very wise man who lived at the time of the Great Migration. The surface had been stricken with cataclysmic natural disasters, forcing people to leave their shattered lands for a dark and painful refuge beneath the sea. The man, known as McGregor, was a visionary scientist and one of the last prophets on Earth. He probed the limits of scientific knowledge in a dozen fields, trying to discover the tantalizing secrets that remained. As I listened, I often imagined that I myself was a descendant of the great McGregor. The story began in the 22nd century with his discovery of a mysterious sea creature on a beach in northern Scotland. No larger than the palm of McGregor's hand, it looked like a horseshoe crab. The scientist took the creature to one of his laboratories and examined it more closely, and what he discovered was so unspeakably horrifying that fear and dread almost drove him insane. Then when he and his staff tried to incinerate the creature, it refused to burn. When they tried to crush it, the hydraulic press shattered under the strain. I pestered my grandmother to tell me what was so horrifying about the creature, but she would only lower her voice and say, it was made of flesh and gold and of another metal that does not exist on earth, and it could reproduce itself. Woe betide the man who finds such a creature. Woe betide him, because legend says it will be his ruin. Thoughts of such creatures still lurking in the seas, still reproducing themselves, gave me endless nightmares. In my daydreams, I pretended that I too would become a scientist and invent a weapon capable of destroying those creatures once and for all. My grandmother always said a single person could change the world with their mind, but whether that change was for better or worse was up to them. A single individual could sway the world as much as the masses, she said, if they were right. McGregor soon turned his mind to constructing incredible submarines the world had only dreamt of before, and in so doing laid the foundation of submarine technology for centuries to come. Without his knowledge, humanity could never have evolved enough to occupy the oceans. I always feared the ocean's black waters, but I also longed to defy their wretched confines. Like McGregor before me, I wanted to make discoveries and adventure with the likes of the brave mercenaries my grandmother spoke about. I was nine years old when word of my mother's death reached us. She'd been managing Drake Enterprises, the family shipping company, which at that time included a respectable fleet of freighters. Then pirates pillaged her ship off Cape Horn. Her body was never recovered. My father, Alonzo Drake, born Alonzo de Granada, was heartbroken. Three years later, without so much as a goodbye, he left us to make his fortune in the oceans. I never understood why he abandoned his only son and his family business just like that. Grandmother always said he'd gone off with his brother, another adventurer. When I myself began to dream of adventures in Aqua's inky depths, I feared I had inherited my father's restless blood. My grandmother thought him irresponsible and said he'd probably found a grave on the sea floor by following the tracks of an angel. That was her poetic way of saying he'd lost his mind. After father disappeared, grandmother took over the company, but contracts were few and far between. Soon our financial backers withdrew and the fate of Drake Enterprises was sealed. When I grew up, I worked as a pilot on our last remaining freighter, the Harvester. My nightmares grew fainter over time, but my daydreams of life as an adventurer held fast. When we could no longer afford our family home in Neopolis, my grandmother and I ended up in the Pacific amid the dangerous and chaotic seas of the northern tornado zone. There I supplied stations and scattered habitats with chemosynthetic protein and other nourishment. My grandmother died quietly in her sleep, and soon after, I, William Drake, decided to follow the tracks of the angels too, 
as my father had before me. I decided to become the hero of my own story, a man who wanted to change a part of the world and learn the last of Aqua's secrets, like the scientist had before me. Yet I didn't reject my grandmother's teachings. It's the hidden things that form our reality. You must never be too close to what's going on around you. You can comprehend a whole seamount only from a distance. I knew I wanted to fight like the mercenaries in Grandmother's Tales. Perhaps I would confront my mother's killers in battle, or maybe just bring a little light to this miserable world without sky, and possibly find some hope for myself there as well. And then again, perhaps I was only a foolish little boy. My grandmother used to say that I was brave without cause and confident without reason. A fish without fins, she said, adrift in aqua far too young and headed for disaster. Hey! Hey, damn it! This is an SOS! I have a ship on my scanner. Will somebody answer me? This is the Bento 7. Hello? Bento 7? Can you hear me? I have received your distress call. My name is William Drake. This is Captain Hank Bellows. My goddamn bilge is filling up, and the stabilizers on my ship are out. I have negative buoyancy. I don't care whose butt I need to kiss. Send help, or me and my family aren't going to be around much longer. Don't panic, Senor Bellows. I'll help you. Call me Hank. Saves time. Where are you? To your west, Hank. There are some massive ridges here, though. I, I can't get over them. I'll upload my nav data onto your onboard computer. It'll show the canyon we're in. I was trying to find a shortcut because the Pacific's swimming with pirates around here. Now we're stuck! Unless you can take us in tow, Drake. My freighter won't fit through that canyon. Don't you have a scout or something? Come on! Right, I'll, I'll come get you in my boat, Hank. Just give me a minute to batten down in case any pirates show up. Ah, oh, shit, man. There's no time for that. My little daughter's already fainted. Grab your valuables if you're that nervous, compadre. But hurry up, or we have... Hang on, Hank. I'm on my way. While I'm following your nav trail, hook your family into the breathing systems on their smart suits. All right, get going!
Harvester, freighter of the Drake Enterprises. What do you want, mate? Some answers. Wrong place, wrong time. Shove off. comes a mighty captain himself, terror of the seas. So where are your classmates? What? My what? Sorry. You're so naive, I figured you must be out here on a field trip. <laughs> I was responding to an SOS. <laughs> Let me tell you something, landlord. Anybody sends an SOS around here, and you can bet they're a pirate. Hell, Hank Bellows has been working that fake SOS sub story for years. We just used him to help us board your ship. What? What do you want? <laughs> All of your gold. I don't have any gold. My name is William Drake. You're Bellows' men? <laughs> nah, Bellows is a damn creep. We were shipwrecked. Now you're rescuing us. Like I had a choice. Them's the breaks in the rescue business, man. Lend someone a hand and you're as likely to lose your arm. <laughs> So, where were you headed in your freighter? Well, my family's gone, so I was just out to see the world. I see. Well, let me give you a little advice. That's gonna be tough to do with your eyes closed. What do you want, baby cakes? Just to talk. Well, let's do that when I've had more sleep. We're all tired. Oh, 
That damn light! Oh, sorry. Shove off! You've got a good heart, boy, but you're a bit soft in the head. That SOS could have cost you your life. That pirate wasn't too tough. Yeah, sure. Bellows is as harmless as a sea anemone as long as he's drunk. But watch out when he's sober. Maybe an explanation. Why did you seize my freighter? Why? No alternative. Look who's here. Ni hao, Captain. You're from the Shogunate. Yeah, but they're after me there. I didn't dance to their beat. Are you going to kill me? Hey, why should we? You've got a strong pair of hands. So as long as you make yourself useful, nothing's going to happen to you. Where are you headed? Following the bowsprit, man. Which is following Amitab's nose. And where will that take us? To Atacama City, I hope. Where Lindy, Mary, and Juanita are waiting for me. Three broads in every port, man. It's natural. What's going to happen to me? This is a tornado zone. So Amitab's gonna make nice with I-1 King's guys. That's how it is. You scratch my back, and I scratch yours. And listen, you better show the old man you got cojones. Balls, man. Amitab likes people to prove themselves. Well, what on earth do I have to prove? That you got fire in your belly. Speaking of which, I heard some tourist punks are shooting up the sea off Lima, too. They steal boats at home, then they come over here to shoot the place up. Good opportunity for you to impress the skipper, and for me to tag along. Who's worn out? If Stony threatens you, just pay no mind and be on your way. Easier said than done. <laughs> Listen, the only thing you need to fear from Stony is his big mouth. Ships mate on the bridge. If there's more to you than meets the eye, now's the time to prove it. This is my ship. I don't have to prove anything. You prove what I tell you to prove. Now, 
What are you doing all alone on such a big freighter? This is my family's last ship. It has an auto-loading system. It also has no cargo on board. What are you doing out here, mate? Well, I'm just taking a look at the world. So little Willy wants to see the world. Well, he's about to get an eyeful. Some inebriated punks are terrorizing Lima too. Go blow their ballast and send them to the bottom. Oh, okay. Why not? Do I have any choice? Sure. It's sharp and shiny like my knife. And don't even think about running off, Willy. I don't know why, but Nat says you stay with us. Now, off you go. Stoney's ready and waiting. Aye, Skipper. Listen, we're performing a public service chasing those parasites out of the territory. You're doing me a service by blowing them away. Besides, the zone always seems to cough up something nice when you're protecting the LF node. Salam.
Harvester. Freighter of the Drake Enterprises. Hey, you just earned another day in your rotten life, Willie. And I hope you noticed that the Atlantic Federation ships are too fast for their own maneuverability. Yeah, I did, Skipper. But what about Stoney? Every once in a while he throws a fit and runs off on his own, and it's always a disaster. A few too many blows to the head, if you ask me. So, what do I do now? Fuzzy Head's our recycling officer. He picks over the battlefield and salvages anything we can use, and he's got a Midas touch. Go see Fuzzy and pick up your swag. My what? Your loot, mate. Ah, Whack and Willie. You put up a brave fight, boy. That's how it is these days. More and more attacks all the time. Why were they attacking Lima too? Just for kicks. Terror tourists from opulent Neapolis out for a little fun. That's not what we did for fun when I lived in Neapolis. Aqua's getting older, Drake. And uglier every year. Now listen. Amitab doesn't like it if we destroy all the freighters we encounter. If you paralyze them with an EMP weapon instead, then I can salvage all kinds of stuff like ammunition, weapons, and credits. And believe me, we are gonna need it all. Still no alternative? What's your full name? William Drake. Drake. William Drake. Of the... Neapolis Drakes? Yes, yes! My mother died and... Save that for Amitab. Drake, the life of an adventurer is hard and takes credits. We just got an SOS. Uh, I just had a bad experience with a distress call. I'll tell you when you've had a bad experience, mate. Now, what do you know about the Crawlers? I've heard they're pirates, murderers, and cannibals. In a word, animal. He's a Crawler, but we've almost got him tamed. Seems his buddies have some scientist broad surrounded. She's sending out SOSs. What would they want with a scientist? The Crawlers enslave scientists to help improve their technology. What the hell? Mayday needs her daily dose of carnage anyway. And hey, paralyze ships whenever you can, so Fuzzy can scavenge off them. It's amazing what he finds. And then? There could be a lot of credits in getting that Machina scientist off the hook. Drake, Angelina, Mei Ling, you're attacking the crawlers. And remember your Vendetta snipers. Their range is close to 500 meters. Can you hear me? Damn. This is Dr. Finch calling from the Taparabo. Get me out of here, and there's a lot of money in it for you. Nobody wastes my time and gets away with it. Oh, how I hate that. And listen up. The crawlers are using a variant of their standard plasma weapon. Get me out of here. This is an Alpha-class SOS. If you do not respond, you will be court-martialed by an international tribunal. You must get my transport and me out of here.
What are you doing down here? What do you want? That's my ship. Excuse me for not fitting in with the decor. Oh, well, I'll be off then.
so follow me and watch yourselves. All right, everybody get ready to escort the doctor. Try to sneak past them. 